certainly be looking to do that again here today. Question isn't will he raise, question is how much. Raised to 100,000. It's time it's a min race. 100,000. So he's varying things up a bit. He's found the five, six of spades. So is he hoping to see a flop here, Joe? No, I think it's, he's just making it just a raise in position and mixing it up a little bit rather than moving all in every hand. How much you have, Fabian? Confusing his opponents a little bit. That's three. Three That's thirty-five. Thirty-five. So Igor Kurganov is going to make the call have with the Jack-7 of spades. And we'll see a flop. Heads up to the flop. Igor Kurganov is the first player to speak. 2-9-3 with two spades. So both players Check. have flopped the flush draw. Trickett doesn't want to see a spade on the turn here. Bet 80,000. 80,000. So Sam's bet 80,000. Action's back on Igor. Igor. Igor could quite easily check raise here with his spade draw. He's taking the safe Four. option. He's just calling. To the turn. So we'll see the turn card. And it's the four of spades. Wow, what a card. That has made Sam Trickett a straight flush. He is absolutely unbeatable in this hand. And Igor Kurganov has got a jack high flush, so he'll think that he's unbeatable. Both players will think they've got the best hand. This will be very, very interesting to watch. This is what we call a cooler, Jono. All the chips are going into the middle. Sam has the absolute nuts. He's got the best hand possible. Igor's going to call 100%. So Sam's bet out. He's bet 160,000 behind a check from Igor. So Igor is trying to trap him here, thinking that he's got the best hand. Little does he know that Sam is unbeatable. Molin, call. Ball in, call. Yes. Join that. Oh my God. Ball in, call. Sam says you're drawing dead. And shows in the straight flush. No mercy, Sam. Straight away, Paul, you joined it. I've seen this. Jesus Christ, man, no. Yeah. To get through the main event. Back to the featured table now. Three players in a hand. Mike Matasso, Roberto Romanello, and Greg Geller. Matasso with pocket nines. Romanello has pocket jacks. Geller leads them both with two kings. Three big pocket pairs. I smell trouble. Flop now is ace, jack, king. Geller hit his set of kings. Romanello a set of jacks. And that missed Matasso. Set over set. Now I really smell trouble. Matasso does check. Romanello. Owns a fish and chip shop in Wales, and he checks, and Geller checks. Geller should have fired away. Too many draws on that board. Turn card is a 10. Geller still leads with his three kings. But see, someone's got to have Broadway now, don't they? Well, nobody does, but somebody should. Matiso checked it. Romanello now checks it over to Geller, who leads, and he checks. But I got to get a court order to make this guy bet? Another 10 on the river. Geller gets the check mark with kings full. Matiso's lucky he didn't hit that nine. He checks. Romanello now will bet 1800 but Jack's full. Yeah, bad time for Jack's full. Man, you're right, Lon. Pocket Jacks are impossible to play. <laughs> Geller now, King's full and a check mark will raise it to 6000. Well, you know, now Geller's check check looks brilliant. He's got Romanello trapped. Madison gets out of the way. Now to Romanello, needs 4200 to call. Just don't raise me. Geller playing games with Romanello. You sure if I pass? Pardon me? You show if I pass? No. One time? No. The only thing preventing Romanello from pushing all in, and I would have yelled out Heidi Ho an hour ago, was that Geller made a big pre-flop raise, so he could have pocket aces or pocket kings. 
And unless Romanello's going Hollywood on us, he's actually considering mucking his jacks full, which would be an unconscious laydown. I mean, if he lays this down, I'll move to a Franciscan monastery and become head chef. <laughs> okay, I'll show. Keller trying to move things along. Is he really thinking of folding this? Okay. He does. No way he folds. Yeah, he said he would. Let's go. Fold. You're out. Get your hands dead. Let's go. And shows. Wow. How do you fold that hand? Romanello folds Jack's full. Wow. And that is the player's wow. good instinct moment. <laughs> oh, my God. I could never have folded that hand. Unbelievable. Full table here at the 2010 Aussie Millions. This is the big game. Buy-in cost you somewhere anywhere between one hundred and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And the action is on Andrew Feldman from the UK. Andrew, a very tidy player, but he's been pretty quiet so far. Not now, though, under the gun, he makes it twenty-one hundred to go. He's got nine ten of hearts, an interesting hand, suited connector. And there is our Hungarian billionaire, Sandor, in the action. He's picked up nine jack offsuit. Sandor feels lucky. What about Massa? Well, Massa's picked up pocket eights here. Could potentially raise. No, he just makes the call, playing a bit carefully. Gus gets out of the way, around to Durr, Tom Dwan, who, as you can see by the amount of chips in front of him, is having a very, very good day. And that has inspired him to make the call with just a 5-3 offsuit. So four to the flop, and here it comes. It is an ace-8-4 flop, massive flop for Masakagawa, flopping middle set. Dwan has an inside straight draw. Nothing there for Feldman. But he is going to make the continuation bet. 5,500 5, is the amount. Pass. Sandor gets out of the way. Round to Massa now with his middle set. A lot of blinking from the Japanese man. I wonder whether the expert players will be picking up on that. So he's sitting, in, sitting with him for quite a while. He decides not to raise. He's just going to call here, trapping. Now, is that pricing Tom Dwan in? Well, with that many chips in front of you, like you mentioned earlier, you know, sometimes you can speculate with risky hands, and it looks like that's what he's doing. Right. And he's reaching for chips, so he's not going anywhere. He makes the call, and we go to the turn. And the turn is a oh. two of spades, so Tom Dwan's speculation has paid off. Check. And he checks. Check. And Feldman checks as well. So it's over to Massa now, who at the flop was such a favourite. And now could be betting into, well, a storm, really. Now yeah, he's going to need the board to pair. We know he's not going to get Tom Dwan off this hand. Tom at the moment has the nuts. He bets 11,000. Now it's over to Durr. Will he choose to raise? He's generally been slow playing his monster hands, as we saw a little earlier with Chris Ferguson. But Massa is no Chris Ferguson, and it may be that Tom will play it differently against the less experienced player. It looks like he's reaching for the bigger priced chips, the more expensive ones. Yeah, remember this is value for value, the same as cash. So it's like he's taking a big <coughs> wad out of his wallet. And he makes nice. a very big raise. Andrew Feldman gets out of the way and the action is back over to Massa. It's a tough spot, really. Well, the shipping magnet, I'm sure, knows his way around the boardroom. He's also a successful poker player, it's certainly in terms of... Uh, Japanese rankings, but playing against Tom Dwan is a whole different kettle of sushi. Well, he's re-raising here. He's decided, I think I've got the best hand. Oh, 
49,200 to call for Tom Dwan, who has the nuts. He's decided not to slow play this hand, and it looks as though it's paid off at this point. Massa still has outs to the river. So Tom Dwan's going to be putting him either on a set or ace-king here. A big, big ace anyway. Well, he's made an incredible call at the flop, and it has paid off. Right now, he's just trying to figure out how to get the most chips out of Massa. Massa still has a lot of outs. But right now, Durr is in the best position possible. And he makes a call, so choosing not to re-raise Massa right there. Massa still has a lot of money left in front of him. So Massa looking for a repeat. And the river is a king of hearts, so Tom Dwan has the nuts. And if Tom Dwan was putting him on ace king, hey checks! Wow, that is very courageous and gutsy poker from Tom Dwan, checking there, risking a possible check from Massa behind him and not getting paid off on the river. In, and look at that, it's paid off. Massa picks up $100,000 in one chip and bets 70 of it. Yeah, even though he'll get some change back from that plaque that's gone in, he's more or less committing himself. And there it is, Tom Dwan pulling the trigger, Massa quickly calling, and look at the disgust in his face as he sees such a big turn card for Tom Dwan and such a terrible card for him. Amazing, there is $400,000 and more in the middle of this base, and Tom Dwan has just won it with a 3-5 off suit. Well, he took a big risk and it certainly paid off and son of Goldie Hawn, who was at our feature table today. And of course, he's the brother of actress Kate Hudson. Action is on Sam Farha on the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam. Farha has ace 10 off suit. Sammy's gonna bet 200 chips. Everybody in the room starts with their buy-in amount, 10,000 chips. Over to Oliver Hudson in 2002. He was one of People Magazine's 50 most beautiful people. I don't see it. Pocket 10s. Raise. And Oliver has announced a raise. He's going to make it 450 to Sam Farha. Sammy doesn't like to wait a long time to get his feet wet. This is the first hand of the session, and he's going to call with his ace-10 offsuit. Oliver Hudson in the lead right now with his pocket tens. The flop is ace, ace, ten. Both get full houses, but Sammy's got the nuts. Oh. Got me kidding me. <laughs> this is the very first hand of the main event for both of these guys. Hudson has tens full. I mean, he can't get up. This is a disaster movie for him. Farha earns the check mark, but both players check. Both were slow playing it, and Mr. Hudson is in bad shape. He's got the tens full. He's not going anywhere. A full house for Oliver Hudson, but it's second best. He bets 300 chips. Farha raises now to 1,300. That's a lot for this point of the tournament. Well, hand one. All in. And Hudson goes all in, and Farha calls immediately. <laughs> Oh my God! Very first hand of their main event. Sammy's got the nuts, and Oliver Hudson is in shock. I mean, someone needs to tell him he can get up. He is drawing dead. He's going home. A meaningless jack on the river, and Hudson's gone. First hand. Nice hand, Sam. Thank you. <laughs> that is incredible. Nice hand. So ten players at this featured table still, including Jennifer Harmon, who was absent from last year's main event. She was undergoing a kidney transplant. Successful, we're happy to say. She's got pocket queens and raises to 200. Corey Zeidman from Coral Gables, Florida, made a stud final table last year. Nine eight of diamonds. Call. Cool. Action on Brady Davis in his first World Series of Poker. He's 34 years old from Illinois. You cannot get up from a table here, Lon, without tripping over an Internet guy in a Red Sox cap. <laughs> Three to our flop now. The flop. Ten, Jack. Queen Harbin with a set, but Zeidman flops a queen high straight. Boy, that is the prelude to some fireworks, usually. Davis checks over to Harmon, who's got a set of queens, and she bets 500 chips. On Zeidman. 2,000. <clears throat> he raises it up to 2,000 with that straight. When you're holding the two smallest cards of a straight, you want to raise everybody else out because you don't want somebody else to get lucky and get a higher straight on you. Well, he forced 
Brady Davis out. Now action on Jen Harmon. It's 1,500 more to Jen. That is a lot at this stage of the tournament. She plays it safe and just calls. Zeidman with the lead with his straight as we go to the turn. The turn is a 10 of diamonds. Harmon makes a full house. And Boylan, that's virtually the worst card in the deck that could come out for Zeidman because it gives Jennifer Harmon, who checks, an almost unbeatable hand and makes Corey think his hand is even better now because of the straight flush draw on top of his made straight. 1,000. Zeidman bets 1,000. And it's just bad luck for Corey Zeidman. He flops the straight. And then the next card gives him a straight flush draw, but if he makes the flush, he can't win. He can only win with the straight flush, and there's only one card left in the deck that could do that for him. Jen in the driver's seat. It's a 1,000 chip bet to Jen Harmon, and she's reaching. 3,000. She raises it to 3,000. Huh. And it is head-shaking time now for Corey Zeidman. He doesn't know it, but only one card in the deck, the Seven of Diamonds, would save him. How can I get off of this hand? Every decision in the main event magnified. Both have monster hands. You lose this hand, your day just might be over. I think he might have ace-king, actually. I was hoping it wasn't that. Now I'm hoping something else. Yeah, if she had ace-king, she'd have the higher straight. Wow. And his flush, if he made it, then would beat her. Hmm. How can I possibly muck this hand? He can only muck it if he believes that she has the full house already. I call. He makes the call. We're going to the river. Jen Harmon with a huge advantage. And now the river card. Oh, the perfect card for Zeidman. The seven of diamonds gives him the straight flush. And he even checks it again, which an amateur would do, to make sure he's got it. Wow. Action on Jen Harmon, who has the full house. She makes it 3,000 to put Zeidman all in. Why is Corey acting as if he's agonized? I guess I could do a lot of sightseeing if I lose this hand. You can't lose the hand. All in. It's over. Zeidman takes the pot. Straight flush. I knew you had that hand. Oh, mamma wow. mia. It was hard to get off. I'm like, gosh, I flopped the straight. I'm like, ace king is the only hand that's going to beat me now. Don't put a seven of diamonds up there. Wow. Wow. Nice hand. Thank you. Come on, a little for that. Hey, nice job, yeah, all right.